Kristen, you're an amazing woman. You're a role model for a lot of young ladies, especially little ladies of color. You're a city council member now, you're in politics. You've gone through a lot of things, trials and tribulations in your life. But there's something that you've been dealing with for the last 10 years, correct? Correct. PTC, yes. Pseudotumor cerebri. What is it and how does it affect you? And how have you overcome it? Uh, PTC, again, is pseudotumor cerebrae, or some would say it's idiopathic um, hypertension of the brain. I have uh, small tumors on my optic nerve that I lose my sight. You can lose your sight. Um, you have this weird, loud, ringing, washing sound in your ears constantly. You have constant migraines. You can go through numerous surgeries, um, and that's kind of where my story is. I started again, I was diagnosed in 2010. Um, this is pretty much me complaining about having migraines, and I'm saying migraines to where I would not move out my bed, and I would sleep all day and night. I would go to the emergency room, and they would just say, there's nothing wrong with her, she's fine. But then I started having seizures as well. And that's when a doctor told me, you need to get your eyes checked. And I went and got my eyes checked and I went to that ophthalmologist and he was like, well, I don't see anything, but I'm gonna send you to a specialist who can see more than I can. And I went to that specialist and he said, "Miss Washington, I'm sorry, but you're gonna go legally blind in both your eyes if you don't have this emergency surgery. You have small tumors on your optic nerve that's causing pressure, it's causing pain, and it's causing you to have high blood pressure on your brain. And if you don't have this surgery, you can lose your, not only your eyesight, but it can be very detrimental to your health. So my parents and I decided that day I was going into surgery. So that was a Monday, that Thursday I was on the operating table. They were going through my eyes, releasing pressure and fluid so that I can keep my vision. Um, unfortunately, I did lose my vision in my left eye and I had, I've had 87 surgeries. My last surgery that I claim that I'm having was in December of last year, 2019. Um, this year, I've tried everything to keep my nerves down, to keep calm. I don't overreact as much when I'm in pain, but one thing that I really, really, really do not do, I don't sit in my pain and stay there. Um, if you see me some days, I'll be happy, bubbly, excited, ready to do conquer the world, and then five minutes later, if I have a headache, I'm, I just want to be by myself. I just want to be alone. And when you have people who don't understand that, it's very, very, very hard. With this condition, um, I didn't have nobody to walk me through. You know how you have cancer patients and they have people, they can go to these groups and talk to people about how they feel when they were first diagnosed. I didn't have that. So I used my pain, my hurt, I used all that to start me my YouTube channel, which is my name, Kristen Sierra. And I started going through daily things that I was going through with my condition when I would be up and I would stay up for like three to four days. And then I would go to the to my doctor and they put me on medication, put me to sleep, but I wouldn't go to sleep. So I would have to go to the emergency room. They would put me to sleep and I would sleep in there. But when you have PTC and you have epilepsy, it is very, very, very hard and scary because you're afraid that one thing you do would scare everybody around you so much that they don't want to be around you. So I kept my condition to myself for years. And it wasn't until I finally had that breakdown moment of, I'm not gonna be stuck in this condition. I'm not gonna let PTC take over my life. I'm not gonna allow this illness to condemn my life and what I wanna do. I actually started speaking up. And this is when I went places and saw people down and sad. I told them, when you look at me, you don't see a blind girl who's in pain. You see a happy, bubbly girl. So don't let your circumstance be your last thing that you're stuck in. Um, with PTC as well, I learned that people will not understand your pain. I can tell you I have a headache and people say, take Tylenol, take Advil, you'll be all right. But it's more to it than that. When I'm in pain, a room like this, I would literally sit in the dark. If you go to my house now, my room is pitch black dark. I don't like light at all. Um, but I, I deal with like, I have to, but I don't like light. Um, I constantly have music playing in my ears because I have a ringing sound that will not go away. It is very annoying. Um, I spend maybe five hours in a doctor's office a week. That's how much this condition takes a toll on your body because mentally you're tired, you're drained, you go through depression. I went through the whole, I give up, I don't wanna be here, just do anything to make it stop. And then I started fighting back. 
and when you fight back, your outlook on anything in life changes. And so I tell anybody, no matter what illness you're dealing with, you are not that illness. Um, cancer can't control you. You control cancer, pretty much. So with this condition, PTC does not control Kristen. Kristen controls PTC. I control the narrative of my life. If I wanted to be this person to have people just automatically suck in my illness and I wanted to hear, you'll be okay, you'll be fine, I'm praying for you, then I would have stayed stuck at, y'all, I don't feel good. But I don't feel good, but I'm moving. I don't feel good, but now I'm a mother whose son is running track and I'm traveling with him. I don't feel good, and I'm a councilwoman. That speaks volumes when you have an illness that people labeled you as what you can't do. And when you show them what you can do, they're looking at you like, how did you, why did you, or what made you, or what do you get your strength from? My strength comes from my family and it comes from God. And if I didn't have that, I wouldn't be doing this interview today. That's a uh, very remarkable story. Um, have you thought about having your story published in a book? I, yeah, I thought about it. People, well, not people, but like my family have said, you should write, you should write a book because your book will help somebody. And I don't know where to start, honestly. Um, I can help you with that. I, I, uh, is this condition rare? Very rare. Um, when I first found out I was diagnosed, when I would research, they had this whole like one in like a hundred thousand would get it. But then as years went on, I start seeing that black women could get it. Then I started seeing that obese women can get it. And so, Honestly, I don't think doctors really know how to treat the condition because nobody talks about the condition. And I say that because I talk to people again from London, from Paris, from New York, from Florida who see my videos and they find me on Facebook and they tell me, my doctor don't know what's going on with me, but I saw your story on YouTube and your symptoms I have and when I brought it up, they ran the test and I actually have this condition, what do I do next? And I, my first thing is, you have to research for yourself. Don't rely on what doctors tell you and you go with it because I've had doctors tell me, I want you to take Diamox, for example. I hate Diamox. And anybody that has this condition, they're on Diamox, they'll tell you Diamox is not of God. Um, that's one of those drugs that you take, you're drowsy, you're out of it. You can be talking to somebody, you don't remember the conversation. I've had days on Diamox where I didn't remember actually getting up. And I stopped my Diamox and told my doctor, you're not gonna have me walking around like a robot or like a crackhead, not knowing what's going on. I wanna be aware at all times of what I'm doing, what's going on around me. So I stopped my Diamox and I said, we have to find another way for me to get better. And so, my doctor even told me, you're the first patient that I've had in years to force me to find other avenues to get well. And if you can't force your doctors to work for you in a way that is for your body, your health, your longevity, then you need to find your new doctor. Hey, if you want to hear more from Auto Nation, please make sure you like, subscribe to the channel. But don't just stop there. When you see the little bell notification, make sure you click on that and you will receive all the notifications whenever they post anything, whether it's a video, a conversation, something fun. You want to make sure that you have the notifications turned on for this channel because it's something you don't want to miss.